the sky. It covers our whole planet and is home to a bunch of known and perhaps unknown avian species. Throughout history, people have looked up, admiring the capability of flight and left wondering what else might be living out there, unseen or yet undiscovered. From possible living pterosaurs spotted across the world to strange jellyfish seen by the military, welcome to the avian cryptids iceberg. Also, if this video gets some good feedback, I'll consider making a part 2 since there's still a lot of entries out there. Alright, let's get straight into the video now with the first entry of tier 1, Living Pterosaurs. Living Pterosaurs, which is probably something a lot of people have thought of, including myself, are basically reports of seeing these creatures in various parts of the world. Like in the United States for example, sightings have spanned from North Carolina all the way to Hawaii and even some remote parts of California. In North Carolina specifically though, creatures have been observed soaring low over cars in cities, which caused people to compare what they saw to either dragons or drastic beings. Witnesses report these creatures as having no feathers with sharp edged features and an overall prehistoric appearance. Cryptozoologist Jonathan Whitcomb has been a key figure in cataloging these sightings, suggesting these are non-extinct pterosaurs, what many might call pterodactyls or flying dinosaurs. Further afield, on Amboy Island in Papua New Guinea, the local lore of the Ropin describes a nocturnal creature that exhibits bioluminescence, a glowing flight through the night sky that has been part of local legend and the focus of several expeditions by researchers from the United States. Eyewitnesses have provided detailed descriptions, including the long tail some pterosaurs are known for, challenging the belief that such species are extinct. One really interesting piece of evidence I wanted to add though that's discussed in the cryptid community is the so-called Civil War Pteranodon photo. This photo shows a group of Civil War soldiers standing over a downed pterosaur, which has been scrutinized a bunch for its origins, with some claiming it predates the digital era and thus could not be a modern fabrication. The photo's analysis suggests the presence of a real object though, but it's generally considered a hoax, like people say it's definitely a hoax. Tuscumbia Space Penguins On a February morning in 1967, Claude Edwards, a farmer in the small, quiet town of Tuscumbia, Missouri, encountered a bizarre sight that would forever leave its mark on the community and UFO enthusiasts worldwide. According to Edwards, on that day, he witnessed a group of small, green, penguin-like beings scurrying around a massive, mushroom-shaped object which he suggested to be about 70 feet away from its position. This object, grayish-green in color and supported by a circular tube, was situated in the meadow next to his barn. The beings, estimated to be about 3 feet tall and sharing the grayish green hue of their ship, appeared to have large, wide set black eyes, possibly goggles, and moved their arms so swiftly that Edwards found it difficult to even figure out if they had hands. Also, their faces had dark protrusions where noses and mouths would typically be, leading to the speculation that these might have been some form of breathing apparatus. Edwards likened these creatures to green penguins from outer space, as quoted, and described them as moving frantically, moving their arms as if agitated by his presence. Edwards then made a bold attempt to approach the craft with the intention of damaging it to prevent takeoff, but was stopped by an invisible force field that stopped him dead in his tracks about 15 feet away from the object. He described feeling as though he had walked up against a wall, unable to see or physically feel the barrier but clearly perceiving its presence. Despite his efforts, including throwing rocks at the craft, Edwards was unable to breach this barrier. The UFO, displaying an array of dazzling colors through evenly spaced oval portals, eventually tilted towards him before swiftly ascending and disappearing into the sky, leaving behind a story that continues to captivate and puzzle to this day. This incident draws parallels too with other UFO sightings, such as the encounter by Finnish lumberjacks in 1971, with a creature known as the Kinula humanoid, suggesting a possible pattern of visitations by beings in protective suits or similar physical characteristics across different times and locations. Moa The Moa, an extinct giant bird native to New Zealand, has had some pretty controversial claims of sightings long after its presumed extinction. Colonial era tales such as those from surveyors and prospectors mark their early European encounters with what they believe could be moas in the remote New Zealand wilderness. Notable among these claims is George Pauly's in the 1920s of seeing a bird 20 foot high in the Otago region, South Island. Another one comes from Alex Mackenzie, who in 1876, as a child in Martins Bay, Fjordland, claimed to have had a close encounter with a large, tailless bird, 
which she initially thought to be a Takahe, but later doubted that when she actually saw one after its rediscovery in the 1940s. This claim was later added by a detailed description of the encounter and the measurements of the bird's tracks taken by her father, which just add to the mystery. Another significant sighting occurred in January 1993 when Patty Franey, a West Coast publican and mountaineer, claimed to have sighted and even wrestled with a MOA. Although taken seriously by the media, authorities were skeptical, leading to what was known as MOA mania that year. The event highlighted the persistent fascination and hope that the MOA, or at least some form of it, might still roam the remote parts of New Zealand. Bernard Huvelmans, a prominent cryptozoologist, included a chapter on MOA sightings in his 1958 book on the track of unknown animals, indicating the global interest in these creatures. There was even a photograph taken around 1993, but as you can probably guess, it was blurry, but it still fueled some debates and theories about the existence of MOAs in modern times. Big Bird In 1975, Texas witnessed a wave of sightings of a creature dubbed Big Bird, and no, not the Sesame Street character everyone knows of. The reports began with two police deputies in Harlingen encountering a bird with a 10-foot wingspan. The sightings then escalated with two teenagers in San Antonio reporting a 5-foot tall bird leering at them, leading to the discovery of large, 3 toed tracks. A Brownsville man later reported a face-to-face -face encounter with a creature he described as otherworldly. The most dramatic account though came from Raymondville, where a man was attacked by the creature, resulting in his hospitalization. Despite initial skepticism and attempts to explain the sightings as misidentified known birds, the consistency and detail of the reports, including physical evidence like the tracks, all end up causing local and even national frenzy. Even rewards were offered for the capture of the creature, showing just how much the public was interested and concerned at the same time. Eventually though, the settings ceased as suddenly as they began, leaving the community with lingering questions and a legacy of one of the most intriguing cryptid tales in Texas history. Lechuza La Lechuza, a figure from Mexican folklore and widely recognized in parts of Texas too, is described as a witch who can transform into a large owl, often as big as a human. This creature is said to have originated before the age of the conquistadors and is associated with various origin stories, including women seeking revenge for wrongs done to them, which is punished by villagers or beings of dark magic. It's feared for its predatory nature, set to feast on humans and capable of carrying away a full-grown man or even attacking cars with this large talon, while also being able to drain the car batteries of a car, since it said it might have control over electricity and storms. Sightings of La Lechuza describe it as making eerie whistles or mimicking the cries of a baby to learn its victims. The origins of the Lechuza legend are traced back to pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, where indigenous peoples had spiritual connections with animals, which were later demonized by Spanish coloners, associating nocturnal animals with witchcraft. The legend likely evolved as a cautionary tale to keep children in line or encourage conversion to Christianity. It suggested that whistling at night could summon La Lechuza, and unbaptized children are particularly at risk. Martin sightings continue to add to the lore of La Lechuza, with various reports of encounters in northern Mexico and the Rio Grande Valley. The creature has also been compared to the harpies of Greek mythology and the Native American Thunderbird too, both of which share similar attributes of storm control and an overall ominous presence. Despite the variations in stories, the consistent theme is La Lechuza's association with omens, revenge, and the supernatural. Aswang The Aswang, which comes from Filipino folklore, is a creature that is said to be capable of shape-shifting and known for its hunger for human flesh particularly targeting children and unborn fetuses. It's said that the Aswan guises as a human by day and then, transform into, and then transforms into various forms by night, like vampires or a witch. Its ability to blend in human society and only to prey on unsuspecting victims under the cover of the darkness feeds into fear of the unknown, which is a usual theme in folklore worldwide. The Aswan has several varieties though, each associated with specific behaviors and characteristics. Like the tic tic or wak wak, for example, is known for the distinct sounds it makes, and it supposedly turns into a large bird for hunting. The sigbin or zigbin transforms into a creature resembling a Tasmanian devil, while the mananagal is seen as a woman who can split her body in half and then fly. These beings are strongest at night, gaining superhuman abilities and the capacity to shapeshift or deceive humans and satisfy their gruesome appetites. 
Historically, the Aswan concept dates back to the 16th century, when Spanish conquerors were documenting Filipino fears of such creatures. These stories, however, may have been influenced by earlier Malay folklore, introducing similar monstrous beings to the Philippine Islands. The Spanish further exploited the Aswang myth though, linking it to local spiritual leaders to undermine indigenous beliefs and practices to instead promote Christianity. Dr. Maximo Ramos's work, particularly the Aswang complex in Filipino folklore, goes into more information about Aswang mythology and the richness of the legend, so I suggest checking it out if anyone wants to learn more about it. His research basically underscores the importance of understanding regional variations and interpretations of the Aswang. Rock The rock is a mythical bird of extraordinary size and strength, prominently featured in Middle Eastern and South Asian folklore, being most notably in the works of One Thousand and One Nights. It's often described as a bird of prey, similar to an eagle or a vulture, but unlike the ones we know, this one is of colossal proportions, with the wingspan so wide it said it could block out the whole sun. In the tales, the rock is known for its incredible strength too, being capable of carrying off elephants in its talons. One of the most famous stories involving the rock is from Sinbad the Sailor, a series of tales in 1001 Nights. The story goes that on Sinbad's second voyage, he finds himself stranded on an island that actually turns out to be the back of a gigantic sea monster, which dives into the sea, leaving him to drown. Sinbad is then saved by the rock, which carries him to safety. Another tale from Sinbad's adventures describes how he encountered a rock's egg, mistaking it for a domed building. Sinbad's men, driven by curiosity, break the egg open, only to be attacked by the parent rocks. They escape though by fashioning clouds of wool and being carried off by the birds, who mistake them for the lost chick. Even Marco Polo, in his book of travels, mentioned the rock as a legendary bird of enormous size said to live in Madagascar and presents it as an actual real creature, although he likely referred to the extinct elephant bird of Madagascar. In his accounts, the rock was depicted as massive with a wingspan of 16 yards and feathers as large as palm trees. But yeah, even though Marco Polo claimed to have sighted the bird, it's likely his description was based on hearsay or just misinterpretation. Piazza Bird the Piazza bird comes from Native American folklore, being particularly associated with Algonquin tribes. It's most famously depicted in a large, colorful mural painted on the bluffs along the Mississippi River, near present-day Alton, Illinois. The name Piazza is believed to mean the bird that devours man in the Illini language. It's often depicted with the body of a dragon, the face of a man, sharp teeth, antlers or horns, the scales of a fish, and the tail of a bird. According to the legend, the Piazza bird was a terrifying predator that lived along the cliffs of the Mississippi River and preyed upon the local Illini tribe. The story goes that a brave chief named Watoga devised a plan to rid his people of the menace. Him and his warriors ended up being successful in ambushing and killing the Piazza bird, thereby ending its reign of terror. The original mural of the Piazza bird was first recorded in European accounts by French explorer Father Jacques Marquet in 1673 during his exploration of the Mississippi River with Louis Jolet. Marquette's diary describes his painting as a frightful image of a creature painted high on the bluffs. The original mural isn't actually visible anymore though, and what's seen today near Alton is instead a recreation based on 19th century sketches and descriptions. Alright, moving on to tier 2. Qin Shan Flying Jellyfish The Qin Shan Flying Jellyfish is a cryptid that emerged from a setting in Qin Shan, China. On October 19, 1998. It was first observed by Chinese Air Force pilot and confirmed by up to 140 ground officials, leading to a bunch of widespread interest. Basically what happened was a military radar detected an unusual blip over an Air Force training school in Changzhou, which is part of China's Hebei province. Witnesses described it as a mushroom or jellyfish shaped, with a bottom adorned with bright, dangling lights. Its ability to ascend suddenly, evading six jet fighters that attempted to approach it, further contributed to its mystique. This occurrence has not only intrigued those in China, but has also drawn comparisons to other similar sightings in countries like Russia, Norway, and the Netherlands, suggesting a global presence of such atmospheric phenomena. This sighting has led to various interpretations too of what the flying jellyfish could be, ranging from an atmospheric jellyfish to possible unidentified flying objects. Despite the intrigue at Spark, there isn't really any concrete evidence to conclusively prove its existence. Skavadar The Skavadar, which is from Swedish folklore, 
was a taxidermy created in 1918 by taxidermist Rudolf Granberg. It features the four quarters and hind legs of a European hare, combined with the back, wings, and tail of a female wood goose. This fictional creature is showcased now at the museum at Nora Berge in Sundsvall, Sweden, and has interested a lot of people with its peculiar appearance. The origin of the Skavadar stems from a tall tale about a hunter named Hakan Dalmark, who allegedly encountered this hybrid creature during a hunt in 1874. The tale became widely known after his housekeeper presented him with a painting of the Skavadar, created by her nephew. This painting, later donated to a local museum, inspired Granberg to create the taxidermy, which has since become a popular exhibition item and an unofficial symbol of Sundesvall. In addition to his backstory, the Skavadar's existence is sometimes used to describe any improbable or contradictory combination of elements, showing how folklore can influence language and cultural expressions too, which is pretty cool. The creature's legacy also extends to its role in symbolizing unity and the blending of opposing forces, as depicted in tales that attribute special abilities and roles to the Skavadar, such as delivering messages or facilitating peace between communities. Washariwe the Washariwe is a cryptid said to live in the Kurupira region of South America, specifically within the Kurupira Plateau. This creature is described as having characteristics reminiscent of pterosaurs, with notable features including a wingspan reported to be up to 20 feet, a long pointed beak, and a distinct crest on the back of its head. Descriptions vary though, with some eyewitnesses depicting it as dark colored, while others suggest a reddish brown hue. Sightings of the Washariwe have been sporadic too, with the first recorded encounters by Western explorers occurring in the early 20th century. These explorers, including a prospector named Riggs, documented their experiences with the Washuire through interactions with local tribespeople. According to these indigenous narratives, the Washuire is not just a creature of the physical realm, but also carries a lot of supernatural implications, being seen as a messenger of the gods capable of influencing fortune. One of the earliest detailed sightings was reported by Riggs, who, during his exploration of the Kuropera region, was informed by a Waka tribesman named Ratawa about the creature. This account, along with others, shows how it's seen as a formidable presence within the dense rainforest of Central and South America. But even though there's numerous expeditions trying to find evidence of its existence, the Washiwire still remains a mystery. The creature's habitat, which is suggested to be the dense and largely unexplored rainforest atop the isolated plateaus of South America, does offer a plausible explanation though for the lack of concrete evidence and the difficulty in studying the cryptid more extensively. Kongamaru The Kongamaru, meaning overwhelmer of boats in local dialect, is a cryptid said to exist in the swamps of western Zambia, Angola, and the Congo. Described in various accounts since the early 20th century, it's said to be a large, bird-like creature being often compared to a pterosaur. Descriptions of the Kongamaro vary, but it's commonly depicted as having a wingspan of about 4 to 7 feet, a beak full of teeth, and a generally reptilian appearance, often with leathery wings. The Kongamaro first gained wider attention through the writings of explorer Frank H. Melland in his 1923 book In Which Bound Africa, where he described encounters with the creature as recounted by local tribes in Zambia. According to these accounts, the Kongamaru was feared by the locals, particularly in regions near rivers where it was said to attack people. In the 1950s, engineer JPF Brown reports seeing two creatures in northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia, that he identified as being similar to pterosaurs. Another notable account is from Dr. J.L.B. Smith in 1956, who received a report of a man who was hospitalized after an attack by a large bird-like creature in the Bengalu swamps. When trying to figure out what happened, the man allegedly identified a pterosaur illustration as resembling his attacker. Skeptics often attribute these reports to misidentified known wildlife, like large birds or bat species, but you know, with any cryptids, it's still subject to theories. Adar Luch Gwyn The Adar Luch Gwyn is a creature from Welsh mythology, specifically mentioned in the Mabi Nagan, which is essentially a collection of ancient Welsh tales. The name Adar Luch Gwyn translates to birds of Lurch Gwyn, or Gwyn's dust birds. These mythological birds are described as having the ability to understand human languages and possess magical properties. According to legends, the other Lurch Gwyn were given to Drodas Aptrifin by his fairy wife. They were said to be extremely fast, able to catch the swiftest of arrows in flight, and they obeyed only their owner's commands. Their most notable appearance in Welsh mythology is in the story of Culwich and Olwen, 
one of the tales from the Mabunagon. In this story, the birds are used in an attempt to kill King Arthur, a plot devised by Drudas against Arthur. Drudas instructed the birds to kill the first man to arrive at a certain battle, believing Arthur would be the first to enter. However, because of a delay caused by one of Arthur's men, Drudas himself arrived first and was killed by his own birds, fulfilling the command given to them. From this tale, the other Lich Gwyn symbolized the unpredictable nature of magic and the idea that one's own weapons or schemes can turn against them. Their story is a cautionary tale about the use of power and the consequences of vengeance. Tengu The Tengu is a mythical creature from Japanese folklore, often portrayed as a bird-like demon or goblin. Tengu are traditionally considered harbingers of war and chaos, but over time their portrayal has evolved and they're sometimes seen as protective spirits or deities. The reason they're on this list is because Tengu are depicted with both human and avian characteristics. The most recognizable features of a Tengu are long nose or beak and red face, which are considered their most defining traits. The two main types of Tengu are the Karasu Tengu, which is a crow Tengu said to have avian features, and the Dai Tengu, meaning great Tengu, said to have more human-like appearance. The origin of Tengu is believed to be a blend of early Japanese folk religion, Shinto, and Buddhism. In early legends, Tengu were seen as disruptive demons and harbingers of war, associated with spirits of fallen warriors. Over time, however, their image shifted. In Buddhist teachings, they were considered protectors of the Dharma, which are Buddhist teachings, but still prone to anger and violence. In Japanese folklore, on the other hand, Tengu are known for their martial prowess, being depicted as skilled warriors who are said to have taught famous historical figures and legendary swordsmen. They also feature in Japanese arts and theater, appearing in no, kabuki, and folk tales. You can even find some Tengu references in anime like One Piece, if anyone's a fan like I am. Alright, moving on to tier 3, Bennu Bird. The Bennu Bird, often associated with the Egyptian phoenix, is a mythical bird from ancient Egyptian mythology, being closely linked to the sun, creation, and rebirth. It's also sometimes considered the Egyptian counterpart to the Greek phoenix. The Bennu bird is believed to have its origins in the Helopolitan creation myth. It was a self-created being said to have risen from the primeval waters of Nun or from the heart of Osiris, who is the god of the afterlife, death, life, and re resurrection. It was associated with the sun god Ra being seen as its soul and was often depicted as a Huron symbolic of the sun cycle, representing both the end of the day and the beginning. As such, it was a symbol of death and rebirth, reflecting the daily cycle of the sun's disappearance at night and its rebirth in the morning. The Bennu bird was also shown perched on a sacred willow tree in Helopolis, the center of the sun cult in ancient Egypt. It was even associated with the Egyptian calendar and believed to have a lifespan of 500 years, at the end of which it could self-immolate and then be reborn from its own ashes, similar to the Greek phoenix. But yeah, from all that, you could see how it was a really important part of Egyptian mythology. Hippogriff The Hippogriff, a mythical creature with the front parts of a winged griffin and the body and hindquarters of a horse, was invented by Ludovico Aristio in his epic poem Orlando Furioso in the early 16th century. This creature symbolizes the coming together of two beings, considered to be natural enemies, thereby representing love's ability to conquer all obstacles, which sounds a bit cliche, but anyways. Aristo's creation was based on a proverbial expression about the impossibility of crossing a griffin with a horse, showing how the creature represents impossibility or incongruity. Throughout history though, the hippogriff has been seen as a symbol of love and majesty, often appearing in heraldry to represent strength and speed, as well as in various artistic and literary works from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance and beyond. Interestingly enough, a hoax in 1904 in Lake George, New York, featured a creature dubbed the Hippogriff, with bird of prey features and horse-like ears, reigniting curiosity and fascination around this legendary beast. In modern day times, its role extends into various fictional realms, which I bet for anyone who's seen Harry Potter, they would have recognized right away that it resembles the Buckbeak. It also appeared in the Chronicles of Narnia and even the Witcher series, so I'm curious if any of you have ever seen this creature before. The creature's life cycle and social behaviors in fantasy literature, such as its slow reproduction rate, intelligence, and complex social interactions, further add to its intriguing persona. Kamazots Kamazots come from Mayan mythology, being depicted as a giant vampire bat, symbolizing night, death, and sacrifice. This entity, known in the Quiche or Zapotec language as the death bat or snatch bat, 
has its roots in southern Mexico and Central America. In the Popolva, an ancient Mayan text, Camazotz is referenced as a monstrous bat-like creature. There's even been some modern reports too in Mexico though that align with a mythological description of Camazotz. One such incident occurred in Monterrey, Mexico in 2004, where Officer Leonardo Samenigo, while patrolling in Guadalupe, encountered a large, hovering black figure after midnight. The figure, described as humanoid with big black eyes and brownish skin covered in black fur or clothing, attacks Samenigo's patrol car, violently shaking it and smashing the windshield. After a collision that left him unconscious, tests were conducted later, which confirmed he wasn't under any influence during the encounter. This incident, which resulted in a damaged vehicle and his psychological assessment, remains unexplained, drawing some comparisons to the Mothman settings in the US. In 2009 too, a similar setting was reported in Chihuahua. A young man driving near La Junta encountered a hunched over creature that upon standing revealed itself as a large, fur covered being with a human like face and two sets of wings. The creature, with red eyes, pursued his vehicle for 15 minutes. Following this incident which was reported in the local newspaper, other individuals in the region too began coming forward with their own accounts. Alicanto The Alicanto, which is from Chilean folklore, is most notably prominent in the midst of miners. This bird is known for its strikingly bright and colorful wings, which are said to glitter, especially at night. The colors of its plumage are believed to vary depending on the type of mineral it has eaten. Gold gives it a golden glow, while silver makes it silver. According to legend, the Alicanto's diet consists only of these precious metals. One of the most interesting aspects of this legend though is its association with fortune and misfortune for miners. It's said that if a miner falls at Alicanto at night, the bird might lead them to a hidden treasure of gold or silver, depending on the color of the wings. This has caused Alicanto to be a symbol of good luck for miners in their quest for riches. However, there's also a catch to the seemingly fortunate opportunity. The Alicanto is known to be a cunning creature. Meaning, if it realizes it's being followed, it will lead the greedy miner over a cliff or into a deep pit, resulting in the miner's demise. This aspect of the Alicanto's myth serves as a cautionary tale against greed and the pearls of blindly pursuing wealth without heed to the dangers involved. Washington's Eagle Washington's Eagle, also known as the Bird of Washington, is a mysterious and controversial figure from North American orthonology. This bird was first reported by John James Aduban the renowned naturalist and painter during his 1814 expedition up the Mississippi River. Audubon claimed to have encountered a previously unknown species of eagle, which he described as standing 3 feet 7 inches tall with a wingspan of 10 feet 2 inches. He noted its all brown plumage, which resembled that of an immature bald eagle, and distinct features that didn't match any known species. Audubon named this creature Falco Washingtoni in honor of George Washington, drawing parallels between the bird's majestic qualities and those of the first American president. Despite Audubon's detailed observations and the inclusion of the bird of Washington in his seminal work, The Birds of America, the existence of the species has been widely debated among scientists and ornithologists. Critics have questioned Audubon's measurements and descriptions, suggesting the bird of Washington could have been a misidentified juvenile bald eagle or even a golden eagle. Others have proposed that it might have been a genuine species that has since become extinct or was an invention by Audubon. The supporters of the Bird of Washington's existence though point to Audubon's methods and deep familiarity with various eagle species, arguing that it's kinda unlikely he would confuse this bird with immature bald or golden eagles. Audubon's detailed diaries differentiate between the so-called brown eagles and S eagles, suggesting he recognized the Bird of Washington as distinct. Also, Audubon used a precise double grid system for his paintings to ensure the accuracy of his representations. The debate over the Bird of Washington's existence though remains unsolved with no known specimens available for modern scientific analysis. Tier 4 Wakwak The Wakwak is a vampiric, bird-like creature in Philippine mythology known for its nighttime predations in rural areas, which is similar to the Mananagal and the Ikak. Unlike the Mananagal though, the Wakwak can separate its torso from its body. Some believe the Wakwak is a type of vampire, while this is considered a nocturnal bird associated with witches, named for the distinctive sound it makes when flying. The creature's presence is often linked with the sounds of the common house gecko, mistaken by some for the wakwak's call. The wakwak is particularly feared for its sharp talons and bat-like wings, with which it's said to slash its victims and consume their hearts. This creature is depicted with a human-like feminine face in some stories, which sort of adds to its whole eerie persona. To deter the wakwak, people used to use fire, salt, 
garlic lanterns, and even inverted brooms at doorways to try and protect themselves from these malevolent supernatural entities. Over time though, the narrative of the Wok Wok, while still remembered, has become less prevalent, transforming more into a tale told to scare children or caution them against venturing out at night. Heitu Bueri The Heitu Bueri is part of the mythology of the Solomon Islands, particularly within the culture of the people of Malaita. This creature is often depicted as a dragon-like creature and is revered as a powerful ancestral spirit. Unlike typical western dragons, this creature possesses distinctive features that set it apart, having a blend of human and avian traits, which include a human-like face, four eyes, and a large body covered with feathers. It's also said to have pendulous breasts that signify its nurturing role which isn't too typical for avian cryptids. This maternal aspect of this cryptid also contrasts a lot with more ferocious dragon depictions in other cultures. Legends recount that the Hadze Buari laid eggs from which the first humans were born, so it shows its position as sort of a guardian of life. This belief also shows the deep connection between the people and the natural environment, where spiritual entities like the Hadze Buari are seen as integral to the creation and maintenance of life. This creature also holds a protective role, safeguarding the people and the land from harm. Its presence in folklore serves as a reminder of the respect owed to the forces of nature and the spiritual guardians that inhabit the world. Tier 5 Ut Boror In Icelandic folklore, the Ut Boror holds a particularly somber place. This figure originates from a heart-wrenching practice of the past where unwanted newborns, often those born out of wedlock or as a result of incest, were simply left in the wilderness to perish. This act, driven by societal pressures to avoid scandal and dishonor, condemned these innocent souls to a fate devoid of love, warmth, and untimely life. The Utboror was seen as the manifestation of these abandoned children, returning from the realm of death to dwell in the liminal spaces of our world. As a ghost, the Utboror is said to appear with the avian characteristics, often resembling a raven, a detail that might be tied to the color of the cloth in which the child was wrapped when abandoned. This connection to birds could also symbolize the soul's attempt to transcend its earthly torment and reach the heavens, only to be bound to the land of the living by its untimely and tragic demise. Those Boror's appearance, rising on one knee and on one hand, fluttering about in a desperate, unending search for peace, evokes a pretty powerful image of unrest and sorrow. The lore also divides these spirits into two distinct types, those who haunt their final resting places and those who are consumed by a vengeful despair. This dichotomy reflects the depth of their tragedy. Not only were they denied life, but in death, they're denied peace, trapped in a cycle of sorrow and rage. The Utboro's yearning for hollowed ground, or basically just a grave where they can rest, speaks volumes about the human need for closure, respect, and remembrance. It's a chilling reminder of the consequences of societal shame, and the lengths to which it drives people to conceal their misdeeds. Zimu The Zimu is a mythical creature from Eastern European folklore, particularly Romanian and Moldovan mythology. It's often depicted as having a humanoid appearance with dragon-like features, capable of shape-shifting and possessing magical powers. The Zimu is known for his malevolent actions too, such as kidnapping princesses and battling heroes who try to rescue them. In some tales, the Zimu desires to marry the princess, which leads to conflicts with human protagonists. The Zimu is said to live in a far-off, otherworldly realm, or sometimes in a dark, hidden castle. It kind of reminds me of Shrek, where he went to the castle. It's capable of creating and controlling natural phenomena too, such as storms and lightning, using them to its advantages in battles or to terrorize people. Despite its formidable powers though, the Zemo is often outwitted by clever heroes who manage to rescue the captured princess and defeat the creature using intelligence, bravery, and sometimes magical items. This creature is similar to dragons in western folklore too, but with distinct characteristics and roles and stories. The Zemu's tales are rich in symbolism, often representing the struggle between good and evil, the trials of bravery, and the quest for freedom and love. Sasa Bonsam The Sasa Bonsam, also known as the Asan Bossam, is a creature from the folklore of Akan people from West Africa, particularly from regions like southern Ghana, as well as Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, and historically connected to 18th century Jamaica through the enslaved Akan people. This entity is characterized by its vampire-like qualities, including iron teeth, pink skin, long red hair, and notably, iron hooks for feet. It's described as residing in trees, from where it ambushes its victims and having wings that are said to be around 20 feet long. The folklore surrounding the Sasa Bonsam serves as a cautionary tale too, 
emphasizing respect for nature and the rules of renewal in the forests of West Africa. Traditionally, the Akan people observed a prohibition against entering the forest on Thursdays, a day dedicated to Asasia, the goddess spirit of the land, symbolizing a time for rest and renewal for the land and all its beings. The Sasa Bonsam served as a guardian of this tradition, enforcing the sacredness of the day and the need for ecological balance by instilling fear of breaking this rule. However, the narrative and perception of the Sasan Bonsam experienced shifts because of colonization, where it was appropriated by Christian missionaries and transformed into a symbol of evil, like the devil, diverging from its original role. Over time, the story of Sasan Bonsam has evolved but remains a potent reminder of the importance of folklore in teaching sustainability, respect for the environment, and the complex interplay between culture, spirituality, and colonial histories. This creature story is not just about the fear, but also about the guardianship of the land, and the lessons on sustainability and respect for nature's cycle that imparts. Pawakai The Pawakai, a legendary creature from Maori mythology, is a monstrous bird that has captured the imagination with tales of its ferocity and immense strength. This mythical bird is deeply rooted in the cultural narratives of the Maori people of New Zealand, symbolizing the fearsome power of nature and the mysteries that ancient forests held. The myth of the Pawakai speaks of a giant bird of prey capable of swooping down to snatch up men, women, and children, carrying them off to its lair. Such stories likely served multiple purposes, like explaining unexplained disappearances or instilling respect for the wild. Also, the legend of Paukai might have been inspired by the Haas eagle, an actual species that once existed in New Zealand. The Haas eagle is known to have been the largest eagle in the world, with the capability to hunt large prey, such as the moa which we talked about before, and yeah, it was pretty large. The connection between the Pawakai of mythology and the host eagle of reality blurs the line between legend and historical fact, suggesting that these stories may have been grounded in real encounters with this impressive predator. This connection is also added to the fact that the eagle's extinction is believed to have occurred relatively recently in human history. Tizzy Wizzy Tizzy Wizzy is an interesting figure from folklore of Lake District, known for its unique appearance and intriguing backstory, and it's a pretty cool name. This mythical creature is said to have the body of a hedgehog, wings similar to those of a dragonfly, antenna similar to a bee's, and a fluffy tail resembling that of a squirrel. The legend of the Tizzy Wizzy first emerged around 1900, when a boatman from Bonus claimed to have spotted this rare creature. This story quickly became a local sensation, capturing the imagination of locals and visitors to the Lake District. The legend sighting led to a capture of a Tizzy Wizzy 2 in 1906, which was then photographed in a local studio. This photograph became the basis for thousands of postcards sold in the area, fueling the legend and attracting tourists eager to catch a glimpse of this mysterious creature. The story of the Tizzy Wizzy is also interwoven with tales of hoaxes and clever marketing though. It's suggested that the entire legend may have originated as a creative way for a local boatman to attract tourists and make money. He supposedly connected the whole story of the Tizzy Wizzy, leading to the first Tizzy Wizzy hunt and subsequently selling postcards featuring the creature. Despite the commercial origins of its legend, the Tizzy Wizzy still remains a beloved part of the Lake District's cultural heritage, with many still intrigued by the possibility of its existence. The creature is said to be a superb underwater swimmer too, which supposedly explains why it's so difficult to spot. On to last year now, Napa Rebobs. The Napa Rebobs are a part of local lore in Napa Valley, California, particularly around Patrick Road. These entities are described as flying monkeys, rumored to be the creation of a mad scientist working to meld monkeys and humans or to develop a new type of soldier. These tales, which emerge around the time of B-rated monster movies of the 1950s and 60s, have contributed to the mystique surrounding these creatures. According to a local legend and various accounts, rebops are said to terrorize people, particularly targeting teens who venture up Patrick Road at night. Descriptions vary too, with some accounts suggesting they're half monkey, half robot adding a robotic twist to the traditional image of flying monkeys. This blend of animalistic and mechanical features could also explain their odd name and purported abilities. Even the area around Patrick Road is known for its dense foliage and secluded atmosphere, so it's often cited as a habitat for these cryptids. This area includes a mysterious graveyard too and stretches of land cordoned off by cyclone fences and no trespassing signs, which only add to the area's eerie reputation and the lore of the rebops. Despite the skepticism and the possibility of these stories being connected to scare youngsters or as a part of local myth-making, the legend of the Rebobs has persisted, capturing the imagination of both locals and visitors. 
The Rebop's legend is so ingrained in Napa Valley's culture too that it even inspired a band to name themselves after these cryptids and incorporate their lore into songs. There was even a proposal to make the Rebop the new mascot for Napa High School, but this idea was not ultimately adopted. Bifang The Bifang is a mythical bird from Chinese mythology, fascinating for its unique appearance and the legend surrounding it. Described as resembling a crane with only one leg, the Bifang features distinctive red and cyan blue markings and a white beak. This creature is believed to inhabit barren Mount Zangi in China and is known for its singular call, which resembles its name. The Bifang holds a special place in mythology too as the omen of fire. Its appearance is often associated with inexplicable fires starting in towns, a characteristic that is likely linked to its red coloration. While in some traditions the Bifang is seen merely as a harbinger of fire, other sources say it has the ability to start fires itself, possibly using fire carried in its beak. Despite these fearsome qualities though, the Bifang was not always seen as a malevolent figure. Historical texts like the Master Han Fai depict it as a benevolent attendant of the Yellow Tea Arch, and even in the Master of Hunan, it's revered as a divine essence of wood. Achiela Bopa Achiela Bopa, which is revered in Pueblo and particularly Zuni mythology, is a great bird god characterized by his extraordinary size and the striking beauty of his rainbow colored feathers, which are said to be as sharp as knives. This celestial being is often associated with creation itself, and legends say he emerged from the universe's heartbeats. It's said that the Achille Abopa also has the power to kill anyone who disrespect him with merely a flap of his wings, emphasizing the need for reverence towards this deity. In terms of cultural relevance, he embodies the universe's power and majesty, serving as a reminder for the awe-inspiring aspects of nature and the cosmos. His story and image continue to inspire both traditional and contemporary depictions, reflecting the enduring legacy of the Pueblo mythology. Also, Achilio Bopa's depiction as a bird god with knife-sharp feathers parallels other mythological birds too across different cultures, suggesting universal themes of divine or supernatural avian beings that bridge the human with a celestial. His representation in art and ceremonies underscores his importance, not just in the religious texts, but also in the cultural and artistic heritage of the Pueblo people. Mboi Tuoi Mboi Tuoi, translating to snake parrot in Guarani mythology, is depicted as a formidable creature combining the features of a serpent and a parrot. This second son of Tao and Karana is known for his parrot-like head, massive beak, and a serpentine body covered with feathers, particularly around the head. This legendary monster is said to patrol swamps and acts as a guardian of amphibian life, reveling in the humidity and beauty of the flowers. Enboi Tua is also known for his powerful and terrifying squawk, which can be heard from afar, instilling fear in all those who hear it. The mythology surrounding this creature is part of a larger narrative in Guarani mythology involving Tao and Karana, whose union produced seven monstrous offspring, each cursed by the high goddess Arase into terrifying beasts. These siblings include not only Maboy Tuai, but also Teju Jagua, Monai, Jasi Jatere, Kuropoi, Ao Ao, and Luiasan, each possessing its own unique abilities and domains within the natural and supernatural worlds. Gudayo The Gudayo is another one from ancient Chinese mythology, distinguished by its remarkable and somewhat eerie characteristics. Resembling an eagle, the Gudayo is notable for its two horns atop its head, a feature that sets apart from any known bird species. This creature is not just a mythical bird though, it embodies the fears and superstitions of ancient China, particularly through its haunting cry, which is said to mimic the sound of a crying baby. This unsettling call, echoing through the mountains where the Gudayo is said to reside, would have undoubtedly added a layer of mystique and terror to the folklore surrounding this creature. According to the legend, the Gudayo is a man-eater, preying on humans who venture too close to its domain. It was said that the Gudayo's die of humans placed it among the ranks of mythical beasts that embody natural dangers and the fear of the unknown. The mention of the Gudayo living in waters in some accounts adds another layer to this mythological significance. Water, often symbolic of the subconscious and the unknown, provides a fitting habitat for such a creature, further emphasizing its connection to the depths of fear and the mysteries hidden in the natural world. So that ends the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you guys have any feedback and thank you for watching. Bye.